Bernie Madoff, the convicted mastermind of America's biggest financial fraud ever, has died at the age of 82. When his giant Ponzi scheme was unraveled in 2008, uh, the money manager's clients thought they had an estimated $65 billion in their accounts, but the money and the profits he said was behind it weren't real. Scott Cohn has a look back. For more than 50 years, he was famous only on Wall Street, a big money manager, founder of his own firm at age 22. The basic concept of Wall Street, which sometimes the regulators lose sight of, as, as do the academics, is it's a for-profit enterprise. He became chairman of the NASDAQ, an authority on regulation. No one's going to run a benefit for Wall Street. So whenever, <laughs> so, so whenever I go down to Washington and meet with the SEC and complain to them that the industry is either overregulated or the burdens are too great, they all start to roll their eyes. But in December 2008, if you work on a trading desk, stop what you're doing for one second. Bernard Madoff became a household name. The FBI arrested him this morning after he told senior employees yesterday that his business was a giant Ponzi scheme. Tonight, as much of, as $50 billion is gone, vanished. From Madoff clients around the world, including celebrities like Steven Spielberg, Kevin Bacon, and Elie Wiesel and regular investors like Betty Greenfield, who lost everything. I kept saying, I, this can't be. This just is not happening. Madoff confessed he hadn't made a single trade in years. Critics like investigator Harry Markopoulos earned the ultimate, I told you so. I gift-wrapped and delivered the largest Ponzi scheme in history to them, and somehow... They couldn't be bothered to conduct a thorough and proper investigation. The stain of the Madoff scandal forced a total makeover at the SEC. I think there is a need for a refocus here on investor protection. But the impact went much further. Bernie Madoff may have done more to tear down investor confidence than any individual in history. In 2009, he pleaded guilty to 11 criminal counts and received the maximum sentence, 150 years. In court, he insisted it was all his idea. His family, he claimed, knew nothing. Are you going to give up your fortune, Ruth? How could they not know? Ruth Madoff was Bernie's high school sweetheart. For a brief time, she kept the books. Did you see nothing, Ruth? Nothing. Nothing? Absolutely nothing. Their sons, Mark and Andrew, ran the trading business. They, too, insisted they didn't know. But for Mark, the older son, the suspicion alone was too much. The body of Mark Madoff was found at his New York City apartment this morning, exactly two years after his father was arrested in a massive swindle. Just 46 years old, Mark Madoff became the third suicide linked to his father's fraud. Four years later, in 2014, younger son Andrew died after a long battle with cancer, maintaining his innocence till the end, having refused to speak a word to his father since he and his brother turned him in. My father, uh, what he did was, was awful and uh, affected the lives of so many people, um, stole people's dreams and futures, and um, us among them. And uh, I'll never forgive him for that. To the end, in letters from prison, Madoff defended his family, even his younger brother Peter, who also went to prison for falsifying records. But he said others were complicit in the fraud, including his bankers and some of his biggest investors. He claimed he pressured them to give some of their money back. Those parties were well aware of the incriminating evidence I possessed about their complicit activity and wisely came forward with settlements, he wrote in 2013. But the authorities say Madoff was never any help, and the remorse he claimed in every message is suspect as well. At his 2009 sentencing, Madoff turned to his victims. I'm sorry, he said. I know that doesn't help you. It didn't, and neither does Bernie Madoff's death.